Bob, first of all, thank you for the interview. My pleasure, eh? Now, Bob, you've been a promoter for decades and one of the top, if not the top, promoter ever. But did you ever think you would be still in the game, still in the business for so many years? Well, Ray, life is funny. And when I was a young man growing up, I didn't think I'd reach this age, period. <laughs> and I'm 80, I became 80 last <laughs> December, and uh, I have no desire to retire. I think maybe that's keeping me going. Well, that's a wonderful thing. Um, let's talk about boxing now. Manny Pacquiao, without question, more than a boxing star, he's a global star. What, what do you think uh, makes him so different or special than the other guys? Well, you have to understand, Ray, first of all, the world is changing. And you have all these third world countries that are aspiring to reach wealth and distinction. And Manny Pacquiao has connected with that aspiration just the way Muhammad Ali connected with the aspiration of African-American people who were looking for freedom and equality in the United States. So many Pacquiao has related to people all over the world in Asia and Latin America who are looking to improve their lot. Look at this kid. You cannot believe the poverty that he was raised in, living on the streets in Manila, on the streets of Manila in a cardboard shack. You know how many kids were trying to be boxers mm. in the Philippines? I mean, practically everyone. And he fought his way through, and he reached this unbelievable pinnacle in his career. And instead of, like a lot of people, turning their back on the, the poverty they came from, he dedicated himself to the enhancement of his people. And that resonates with everybody. Right, I understand. Yeah, that's a, that's a really big thing. Um, now you're here naturally to uh, promote and acknowledge the uh, Pacquiao-Bradley uh, fight. A lot of my avid boxing friends, they don't think this is a walk in the park. No, it's not. With Bradley. It's not because we have always tried to match Manny with top-level competition. This fight is different in the sense that Bradley is a young, hungry, undefeated fighter who can match Manny for hand speed, foot speed. The only advantage that I see that Manny has is experience, and he's a little more powerful. He has a good punch, much better punch than Bradley. But Bradley, if he can take the punches of Manny Pacquiao, it's going to be a very, very interesting tight fight. You know that. I, agree I with don't you. have to. I agree with you. Um, the sport of boxing. They say that we've taken a backseat to. UFC, MM, mixed martial arts, what have you, and um, what's your take on it, Bob? What, how, how can we fix our sport? How can we fix boxing to get it back to, the, to my era, to Ali's era? Well, first let me say, let's address the mixed martial arts UFC phenomenon. Their business model is they pay their athletes barely 20% of what comes in. And therefore, they have more than 80% for profit and for publicity. So they can buy newspaper by putting a lot of ads in and getting mm -hmm. editorial space in, say, USA Today. In boxing, as you know, Ray, over 80% of the revenue that comes in goes to the fighters. So there's a lot less. But look at the pay-per-view numbers. Uh, Manny Pacquiao fight or Floyd Mayweather fight easily tops a million homes, goes to a million three, a million four and higher. You know how many homes they do in a typical UFC pay-per-view fight? Less than 200,000. A lot of it, you understand, is hype because they have all this money 
available to them because they have a monopoly and they pay their fighters next to nothing. Manny Pacquiao will make over $25 million guaranteed for their fight with Bradley, right? I don't think all of the UFC fighters <laughs> together for a year <laughs> make that. So a lot of it is smoke and mirrors. Okay. Okay, I, I feel a lot better now, but uh, Bob, as usual, you know, it's always great to see you and your family, and uh, God bless you, brother. Thanks, man.